What's up everyone? My name is Ryan. This is Eric and welcome back to the Give and Grow Investing channel. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you for all the views, the likes, the comments on our last video. We greatly appreciate it. We appreciate you for stopping by and just and just giving us that support. Uh, today, we want to start a series where we're going through our portfolios to be as transparent as we can with you. Um, and, and with that being said, uh, we're going to start off today with retirement accounts. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you the ones that 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 we have. We're gonna show you what we're we're allocating in those in those retirement accounts, uh, and we're gonna we're actually gonna start off right now by talking about our philosophy on them. So, Eric, uh, could you go over our philosophy on retirement accounts? Yeah. So when it comes to our retirement accounts, this is our foundation. You know, we want to plant the seed. We want to water it. We want to let it get its sunlight. We want to get the nourishment. 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. These seeds are going to be beautiful trees. It's going to be an awesome forest, and we're going to be doing great. Another analogy I like to think of is baseball. You know, people go out there when it comes to investing, and they're trying to hit home runs. They're swinging for the fences over and over, but they're striking out. But we, we want to go out, and we just want to hit singles every single day. Down the road, it's going to be automatic home runs. That's our philosophy. That's the foundation we're talking about. So the first account we want to talk about is a traditional 401k. So Ryan, when we think about the traditional 401k, what is the big word that we're thinking about? The big word is the match. Mm. The match meaning that basically your company will contribute to your 401k uh, and they're basically just, just giving you free money just for working there and, and having it. So give me an example. What does that look like? So what that looks like, let's say, let's say your check was $200, which, okay. was, which was 5% of, of your total salary. So, uh, so, you know, basically every, every company has it differently, but let's say in this case, your company matches you dollar for dollar up to 5%. Mm -hmm. So you put in 200 and that means that they also put in 200, making it a total of $400. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so it's what free money. Is take the match, take the free money. Yeah. Not and advice. that's just for working. <laughs> Not advice, but do what you want yeah. to. Okay, so when you think of allocation, you know, I know when I went on my 401k for the first time, I saw a lot of stuff. I saw target date funds, I saw bonds, I saw index funds. How do you allocate your account? So I'm 100% uh, in stocks and that's all into this, um, this index fund that mimics the S&P 500. Yeah, so when it comes to the S&P 500, there's three big indexes. There's the Dow Jones, there's the NASDAQ, and there's the S&P 500. We're going to have a whole series where we break those down and talk about those. But for today's episode, just understand that over the past 100 years, the S&P 500 has an average return of 10%. That's including the Great Depression, the pandemics, the Great Recession, uh, the wars, all that stuff. It's the average consistent return of 10%. When, so basically, the S&P 500 is the top 500 companies in America with the largest holdings being in like Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA. Berkshire, Amazon. So just knowing that, just know that those funds is they're always they're always going to do well as long as America has one of the best economies in the world, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So that is awesome, awesome, awesome. So Ryan, let's talk about some of the taxes when it comes to traditional four hundred one k's. So when it comes to is it pre tax? Uh, does it lower your taxable income? Can you tell me that? It's actually both of those. Uh, okay. You actually hit it right right on the head. Oh, so nice. So basically, uh, with a 401k, those, those contributions are considered pre-tax, so you pay those later on when you're ready to retire, meaning that, uh, and that means that it lowers your taxable income, which uh, lets you be able to not have to pay so much in taxes throughout the years. That's awesome, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you make your investments over the years, these investments are growing, is that taxed? That is tax. Okay, uh, that's okay, but I hear there's another account where that growing money is not taxed. Let's talk sure. about that. What is that called? It's the Roth IRA. The Roth IRA. Well, let's get into that a little bit. So tell me, talk more about how this, this tax-free money works. How does it grow? So, so the Roth IRA, basically you contribute to it, it's taxed immediately. And the money that is in your Roth IRA, including everything uh, like you know appreciation, all the dividends mm -hmm. that, that you get from that, your, your value, all of that, is, is, is basically tax free in the end when you're ready to retire. So, okay. so that whatever it is by the time you, by the time you're ready to retire is, is what, is what you can take and you're paying no tax on that because you've already done it. 
Okay, so you have to set this account up on your own. This isn't done through your job. So what right. are some good brokerages that you would recommend? Uh, some of the common ones, uh, Vanguard, Fidelity, uh, those are probably the probably some of the more common ones. Uh, Charles Schwab, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I like all those. Um, so what index funds are you recommending to invest in? Because we talked about the S&P 500. What's a good S&P 500 mimicking index fund that you would recommend to everybody? Right, so uh, two that come to mind, uh, the VTI index okay. fund and the, uh, the VOO index fund. They're both really, really... Uh, safe choices. Uh, okay. They, uh, you know, they both mimic the S and P five hundred, and uh, you know they're they're just really good. Uh, low I've cost. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah low cost. Uh, I've actually heard a lot of millionaires talk about these two ones, and they're like, I'm I've been fully in this for a very long time, and I've made millions off of it. So that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I know you're more VOO. I'm more VTI. Yep. So that is cool, cool, cool. Okay. So what are some of the cons uh, about the Roth IRA? So some of the cons, uh, one being is that you have a cap on how much you can contribute. Uh, if you're under 50, uh, that, that would be $6,000. If you're over 50, uh, it actually increases to $7,000, which is pretty cool. So that's per tax year. You can put up, for me, being 32, I could put up to 6000 a year for right. a taxable year. Correct, correct. Awesome, awesome. Um, there's also uh, some, uh, there are some income limitations to it as well. If you're single, um, if you make uh, if you make over 144k a year, okay. yeah, you, uh, then uh, you are no longer eligible to have a Roth. And if you are married, uh, combined, if y'all make uh, 214k a year, then you're no longer eligible. Yeah, if you're in that boat, congrats. Yeah. Um, there are other ways to get around that. It's called the backdoor Roth. But to be honest, we still have to do more research on that, and we'll get into that on another video. But that is an option if you make more than that. Right. Okay, so I have a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So they don't get the, I guess, the work offer traditional 401k. They don't, they make too much to do the Roth IRA. What's another option for them? Another option would just be the traditional IRA. Uh, it basically works the same way as the Roth, except you're not, uh, it's considered after tax contributions. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no big limits. If you wanted to get into that, you could just go to Fidelity or Vanguard. You could open up a traditional IRA, and you could start picking those index, those indexes that we recommend, whether it be VOO or VTI. Right. The same exact way. Just mm -hmm. the taxes are going to be a little bit different, basically. Right. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So out of all these, I think our favorite is the Roth IRA. Now, in some situations, your company might offer a Roth 401k. Um, that's a little bit newer going forward for companies, but it is possible. Ryan and I are pretty lucky because both of our companies offer that, yeah. and we both um, have set up our 401ks that way. Um, what's the max that you can put into a 401k each year? Uh, the max would be uh, 20.5k. Okay. Which is, uh, which is, I mean, it's a lot. That it's is, a lot to put is. in. Starting off, we recommend taking the max, or taking the match if you have the option, and then maxing out a Roth IRA. Mm hmm but that's just our opinion. Um, okay, so we've talked about all this. Um, we talked about playing in the seeds. What does the future look like? Let's look into that a little bit. So yeah. we're gonna look at some numbers. We're gonna pull up a chart. So for this, we used a compound interest calculator and we wanted to know from age 25 to 65, if you invested $500 a month um, in one of these index funds and you just let it grow, you let it do its thing, how much would it end up being at after 40 years? So from 25 to 65, and in this calculator, we assume that you're getting an 8% return. So from 25 to 65, how much will you have, Ryan? You ready for this? 1.5 million. Wow. Man, that's that, a lot of money. That's amazing. You're talking about trees, forests, the Amazon. Ooh, that's some real generational wealth right there. And, yeah. that's, and that's just off of one of these accounts. Like, yeah, you know, that is, it's not to mention that you can have a Roth and a 401k. And that's just, you know, you, th you that's really, two. And it was simple. It's just a simple system. You stick to it. You be consistent and you can get there. It seems like a long time, but it's well worth it. Promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you're a little bit older. You're kind of my age, 32. 32 to 35. So what would happen from 35 to 65 if you invested 500 a month uh, index fund, you're getting that average. We're going to use the 8% return, a little bit more conservative, conservative than the 10%. But when you think of fees and stuff like that, it's just better to use the 8% number. Um, so yeah, so from 35 to 65, 30 years, you're still going to have 680k. Yeah. I still like that. That's not bad at all. 
All right, what about 45 to 65? 20 years. Same setup, index fund, same percentage. You're going to have 275K. Woo. 55 to 65, last 10 years. You're still going to get 86K. And that's not bad. Yeah. So I mean, it's, yeah, that's the a lot. big thing that I take out of this is compound interest and time. Time is your most powerful asset. So if you're not investing, get started today. You know, we just kind of shared our opinion. We just kind of shared a little, I guess, system that is so simple, right. it's so easy, but it's so beneficial. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and really, uh, you know, with the Roth IRA, you can start that at 18 years old. And like, and like we just said, time really plays a big part in this. So if you just, if you just turn 18, I know it's kind of hard because you want to spend a lot of money, you know, you're thinking about going to college and, or, 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 or just doing anything for all, for all that is, but take that money, start a Roth and you will not be sorry by the time you retire. Yeah. Listen, I didn't start investing until I was like 29 and I just started with $25 a month. You know, today I'm well over, you know, 1k a month, but it took time, you know, um, it is, it does take discipline. Um, you do, you have to have that desire. Um, it's just like working out or eating healthy, but once you get it set, it becomes automated. Um, it's, it's a routine. It becomes habitual. And I mean, you're set, you're done. So that kind of concludes what we want to talk about with retirement accounts, man, Ryan, that was awesome. Thank yep. you for sharing all that information. Thank you. Um, I do want to talk about a comment we got from our last video. Um, cause we asked y'all, you know, out of all the accounts we talked about, which account do you think has performed the best year to date for the year 2022 for our account? It was the Fundrise account, which was the real estate account. I'm not surprised by that just because there's still a very big demand for real estate. The supply is still lacking. Some people think that market's in a, a bubble, but that's gonna um, be a whole separate video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're not surprised by that, but no. that's, that's really cool. So someone commented, um, looks like Charles or Chuck. They said their number one returning uh, investment for the year 2022 is SQQQ. And that's just an ETF that uses, I guess, inverse leverage. So basically when the market's going in the opposite direction that you want it to, this kind of ETF goes up. Um, it's a little bit more advanced and we'll talk about it in another episode, but thank you, Chuck. That is really awesome, really cool. Thank you for that comment. Um, so yeah, today, if you like this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe. If you have any questions, stuff you feel like we didn't cover, just leave a comment. We will get to it. We promise. But overall, we just want to thank you. We love you guys. And until next time, let's give and let's grow.